Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. Today on the Sweetwater Minute, we're joined by Lev Perry, Director of Product Management for Universal Audio. Good Thanks for you. coming in. Thank you Appreciate so much. it. Now, we did a video on the Universal Audio Apollo a few months ago. We were able to introduce that to you, and Lev was actually directly involved in all of the development of that product, correct? Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the product, where it came from, and why it is the way that it is? Absolutely. So, uh, the product really came about uh, as really trying to marry the two sides of the company. Uh, Universal Audio makes uh, high-end processors, be it mic pre's, uh, compressors. Uh, on the other side of the coin, we've got the UAD part of our business, which uh, is really the premier plug-in platform uh, in the industry. And really, this product brings them both together by combining a high-end audio interface and UAD processing in one. Right. Um, it's not just an audio interface with a UAD inside. I mean, really, we've come up with a, a front-end workflow whereby we can plug in all your instruments, uh, you know, keyboards, microphones, guitars, uh, and actually track through uh, the entire library of UAD2 powered plugins right. with sub two millisecond latency. So the idea of front end UAD processing and then also the traditional UAD2 processing on the back end for mixing and mastering, the product can do all of those things in one and it's a very elegant workflow. Right, it's a very beautifully integrated solution for recording audio, for listening back to audio. So today let's address some of the questions we've been getting about the Apollo, about how it works and what it does and especially how it sounds. We've had a lot of questions mm -hmm. about the converters. Can you tell us about the converters that are in the Apollo? So yeah, great sounding converters. All of the specs that are actually on our website are real specs. They're not just manufacturing parts. I've seen that on some forums and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we got great performance out of the uh, A to D and D to A, and really important, great noise specs. I mean, the thing just sounds beautiful, very open. Um, one of our previous products was called the 2192. It was a two-channel a to D, D to A converter. Right. This is not that, and we think that's a good thing. It's a different type of topology. It's a very, very clean and open sound, whereas the 2192 was a very colored kind of rock and roll converter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I own a 2192. I love it. It's great. Sure. This is a totally different beast, and you know, the real idea with this product was to get a clean and open sound and then to color it with plugins because we've got tape emulations, compressor emulations, you know, tube models, class A discrete models. So all these different types of plugins that we have, all these technologies that we model, really Apollo can take on the sound of these by using UAD plugins on the front end. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different design topology, totally different uh, configuration. Right. Um, but you know, if you look at the converter specs, it definitely holds its own against other products in its price band and even uh, products costing you know, much more. So right. um, you really do have to hear it to really understand the differences. And obviously uh, converters, when you compare them, it is a very, very kind of uh, minute kind of difference when you go between them. But when you listen to it compared to some of the competition, it's a very, very open sound, and we think customers are really going to like it. Right, yeah. When I listened to it, I was very impressed. I thought mm -hmm. the sound was, like you say, very open. It's a very open kind yeah. of a sound. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> a, kind of a sound. It, it's, a great, it's a great word for it. Yeah, and definitely, you know, it, it is one of those things. It's, it comes down to taste. Uh, we definitely don't think it sounds like some of the products in its price band. We think it sounds like a much more expensive converter, which is something that we're really proud of. Now, something else people have been asking about. There's been a lot of talk about, just as you were saying there, using the plugins as you're tracking. Yeah. Um, but that's not all the Apollo can do. You can also use those plugins when you're mixing and also for mastering. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the cool thing about the product, you know, when you take away the UAD for a second, it's a great sounding converter as we've covered. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you're ready to, to mix and master, you've got a great sounding, uh, you know, reference quality D to A there. There's a dedicated monitor uh, control knob that lets you, you know, connect it directly to your speakers and you'll have a uh, great monitor section there. Right. But yeah, when you're ready to start mixing and mastering, you would probably go into our console application and take out all of the front end processing plugins. Uh, and now you've got more DSP to dedicate to mixing and mastering. So mm -hmm. those same plugins that you can track with are the same plugins that run as U82 plugins inside your DAW. Uh, and yeah, you can load up any of our great mi mixing and mastering tools, which is really cool. Uh, if there's any existing customers out there that have U82s and they add an Apollo to it, Mm -hmm. All those same plugins that they already own will work on Apollo, both for front end and for back end mixing and mastering. Right. And we make some amazing processors like uh, the Manly or the Precision Series. All that stuff can be used at mixing and mastering time uh, with Apollo. So it's a really, right. really cool workflow. And again, uh, our plugins are world renowned for some of the best mastering tools that are available. Absolutely. And something you mentioned earlier when we were talking, uh, if you already own a UAD2 card, as, yeah. you, as you mentioned, and you have purchased plugins for that card, those plugins are already authorized to work on Correct. the Apollo, so you don't have to buy them again. That's great, yeah. You, you basically register the unit in the same kind of system or group that you've already got. Mm -hmm. All the plugins will work on it. What's also kind of cool there is, let's say that you're going to go out and track somewhere uh, remote. You can take Apollo, and the actual authorizations live on the box. Okay. So you can actually go somewhere, track with plugins, come back to the studio, uh, install it, and all of the plugin uh, DSP power that you have is to totally dependent on what UAD devices uh, are all in the box. So yeah, if you right. have 
an Apollo and a U82 PCIe or a satellite, it just grows your pool of DSP uh, for mixing and mastering. Right. So the Apollo really is the key. Yeah. The, the key in the sense of authorizing the plugins. So you don't have to have a separate authorization on your laptop and your studio computer. If you go to a friend's computer yeah. and they have the plugins, you can take your Apollo and the authorizations are already right there. Exactly. And UAD works the same way. The idea that you mm -hmm. uh, have these authorizations, they live on the box. You know, a, a lot of copy protection schemes are usually done by some sort of a USB key, right. which, which is great for portability. Uh, we kind of went one further by putting the actual authorizations in the unit itself. So right. very easy, very portable, uh, and customers are really digging that concept. Right. Now, when you're tracking, the, the front end plugins go into the UAD console. Yes. But when you're mixing or mastering, where would the plugins go? They go inside your DAW, just through AU, VST, uh, or RTAS. So the, okay. uh, it's a really interesting concept and kind of mind boggling because you can do it all at once. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you can have the console up, load up an LA2A and a Pultec, uh, and then go back to your DAW, and maybe you've got a, a pre existing track that you're kind of mixing and, and tweaking with, and you can have those same plugins running in the DAW all off of Apollo all at once. Right. Which is very cool. And none of that affects latency. Yeah, you know, the latency, as far as tracking goes, mm -hmm. is all handled by the console itself. So analog to analog, we're about sub two millisecond input to output with plugins. And it's pretty unprecedented when you talk about using plugins right. uh, to get that kind of a latency spec. And then, yeah, the, the DAW plays back. And all DAWs have automatic delay compensation to let you kind of compensate for the fact that, OK, you're using an audio interface, and you've got these pre-existing tracks playing back. Really, it's like the DAW plays out into the console, and your live inputs play into the console, so you get a latency-free experience with plugins. Right. It's pretty cool. Right. So the Apollo really covers the whole process. You've got the great converters and the whole uh, monitoring uh, situation for when you're tracking, yeah. and you can apply plugins then. Yes. When you move to the next stage and you're mixing, you've, of course, got the Apollo as your output converters, your monitor control, and you've got plugins that run in your DAW. That's exactly it. And when you're mastering, you run your mix to the plugins inside your DAW that are, of course, running on the Apollo, yep. and you've still got those mastering quality converters That's right. and monitor control. Exactly. So really a completely integrated solution for everything that you want to do in your studio. Absolutely. All right, it's a brilliant product. We can't Thank wait. You. Yeah, we're excited. We're very excited to, uh, to get it in stock and to, uh, to uh, start having it uh, out there to our friends out uh, in the studio world. Very soon. Appreciate you coming in today. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me here at Sweetwater Minute.